NixOS is an amazing Linux distribution focusing on simple declarative configurations, atomic upgrades, easy rollbacks and unmatched reproducibility. And this is the ultimate NixOS guide, by the end of which you will learn how to install NixOS, how to edit and upgrade NixOS declaratively, what flakes are and how to use them, what is and how to use Home Manager, and finally, simple ways to structure your Nix files for ease of configuration and use on multiple machines. So without further ado, let's begin. When you use a traditional operating system, you typically add or remove features by installing packages, modifying configuration files or enabling services. This method of system configuration is known as the imperative approach in contrast to NixOS's declarative approach. On NixOS, everything can and should be declared in special Nix files, which are then used to rebuild your system as if you were installing it from scratch. The closest analogy I can think of is declaring node packages in package.json as opposed to having a script that imperatively installs all packages one by one. Script on the left is literally laughable because even though the result looks similar, it will be much harder to reproduce, modify or analyze. Declarative approach also allows you to easily share one configuration among multiple machines, which means that a simple git pull command is all you need to deploy your existing configuration to a brand new machine. Worried about breaking important parts of your system when updating? NixOS has got you covered. Each time you rebuild your configuration, a fresh version of NixOS is created, containing only the components you have declared. All previous versions remain on your drive until you explicitly delete them. This allows you to revert back to the last version, fix any issues yourself, or simply wait for them to resolve on their own. Thanks to the popular Calamari's installer, getting NixOS is just as easy as any other Linux distro. Select the correct region, keyboard layout, username and password, all the usual stuff. You can also immediately choose one of the various desktop environments, which will only slightly affect your initial configuration file. I will choose GNOME, but you can choose whichever one you prefer. Make sure to enable swap file and tick the unfree software option. During the final step, the installation might get stuck at exactly 46%, but don't worry about it, just wait a little bit. Reboot your computer, and if your desktop environment loads correctly, you have successfully created the first iteration of your system, and from now on, you will be able to roll back to it in case anything goes wrong. So where is that fancy configuration file you keep hearing about? By default, it is located in slash etsy slash nixos slash configuration.nix. Navigate to it by running cd slash etsy slash nixos or opening this directory in a graphical file manager. You will also see a hardware configuration file there, but you almost never want to modify it. Open the configuration file with sudo edit and you will see a bunch of options defined in a special nix syntax. At this point you can think of it as not much different from json, but if you have any trouble understanding it throughout the guide, make sure to check out nix language video in the link in the description. The first thing you usually want to do on a fresh system is install software you are already familiar with. Scroll down to the line that says environment.systempackages and let's add something there. If you want to know the names of available packages, navigate to search.nixos.org website where you can choose any of the 80,000 available packages. Nix Packages is currently the largest software repository in the world and it absolutely dwarfs all other repos both in terms of number of packages and number of fresh packages, closely followed only by the mighty AUR. In addition to packages, default NixOS configuration file also includes a bunch of options depending on what you choose during installation. The ones I got here include enabling GNOME, CUPS printing service, pipe wire, and some other essential desktop options. Obviously you cannot fit everything here, so to discover new ones, write manconfiguration.nix and then use slash key to search for your desired options. I'll search for Bluetooth and see that hardware.bluetooth.enable is the option I need, and judging by the boolean type and default false value, I can assume that all I need to do is set this option to true in the configuration. If you cannot find something here, feel free to use NixWiki or Google. NixOS has been around for more than 20 years already, so 99% of your use cases should already be covered with options. Now use sudo nixos rebuild switch command to rebuild your system and switch to the newest version. We can immediately use Vim, connect devices with Bluetooth, and the bootloader will now display two different system versions to choose from. But wait, doesn't storing two slightly different versions of the system take a lot of storage? And the answer is, of course not because Nix Package Manager stores everything in a magical place called Nix Store. It is located under slash Nix slash store directory and every single package you install is going to be there. Try to locate any binary with which command and you will see that it is located in the bin folder of one of these Nix Store directories. 
This storage mechanism is what allows NixOS to reuse packages between multiple system versions. Each time you rebuild your configuration, your system's blueprint is created in the Nix store as just another regular package, and it simply holds references to other regular packages from the store. On each startup, NixOS executes activation script from this blueprint to populate your root directory based on the options from the configuration file that was used to create it. Therefore, the only thing that matters in terms of disk space is amount of packages you install across all present rebuilds. It's not uncommon to have dozens or even hundreds of these system versions at once, but if you want to keep things clear, you can use sudo nixos rebuild test to rebuild your system, activate it, but don't add it to the bootloader. Even then, you still want to clean up your storage once in a while, and you can do that by running sudo nixcollectgarbage delete older than and 15 days for example. It will remove all system versions older than 15 days as well as all packages that are no longer used by new generations. Basic system configuration is covered, but what about actually updating packages? This is the toughest, but definitely the most important part of the video. What many beginners do not realize is that NixOS Rebuild does not update any packages. Let me explain. Nix packages, the giant repository of, well, Nix packages, is hosted on GitHub. It's split into many different branches, but the most important ones are upstream, unstable, and the latest stable. By default, when you install NixOS, your system gets pinned to the latest commit in the stable branch. All packages you install and all NixOS options you apply are then taken from it. This commit is called a channel and it stays the same until you explicitly update to a newer commit. You might already see a problem with such approach, if you were to share your configuration with another person, there is no guarantee that their pinned commit will be the same. They might be on an unstable branch or on a very old commit that might not even include the options that you are using yet. This is where Nix flakes come into play. They are basically a special system for managing your Nix code dependencies in a declarative way. In a moment, we will create a file that explicitly lists your preferred Nix packages branch as a dependency, and Flake system will then automatically create a log file to keep track of its updates like in any other modern package manager. Nix flake update command can then be used to update all flake dependencies. This way, our flake configuration won't be dependent on a special systems channel, making it truly reproducible and reliable. To begin using flakes, you want to open your NixOS configuration and add this line anywhere you want. Nix flakes are considered an experimental feature right now, but they are already widely adopted by the community, so there is literally no point in not using them. Rebuild your system, and you now have access to latest and greatest Nix commands. Next, cd into slash etsy slash nixos and run this command to see a flake.nix file appear in this directory. Open it with your preferred editor and you will see a bunch of Nix code. It might seem daunting at first, but don't worry. Like I mentioned before, inputs that at the top define sources that our flake needs to fetch, and outputs holds chunks of Nix code that can be evaluated after fetching all inputs. The only source we have here is regular Nix packages from the unstable branch, and the only output is this default NixOS configuration, which references configuration.nix module from the same directory. You don't have to modify this file at all, because everything is already done. Rebuild your system with a special dash dash flake argument, which takes a path to your flake's parent directory. Wait for it to finish, and take a look at the current directory with ls command again. You will see a flake.log file appear, confirming your undeniable success. That is of course not the only advantage of using flakes, because like I've said earlier, inputs define multiple sources that your flake needs to fetch, which allows us to fetch other community flakes, just like one of the most popular ones, Home Manager. Home Manager provides us with a very nice NixOS module, but before we can import it, let's talk about what modules are. Modules are chunks of Nix code that extend your configuration by setting options or providing new ones. They usually look something like this, which is equivalent to this piece of pseudocode that I wrote. Basically functions that take some arguments and return dictionaries with options. If it looks familiar, that is because your configuration.nix and hardware configuration.nix are both NixOS modules. Configuration.nix here imports hardware configuration.nix and is itself imported in our flake. Notice that hardware configuration seems to get more arguments at the first glance, but that is only because all other ones are hidden behind this amazing triple dot syntax. Making your own module with custom options is also really simple. Create a new Nix file, import it, and fill it with whatever you want. I'll make a module that defines my system's primary user and sets its shell to ZSH. 
Grab those options with config key and define an option set above it. Now we can add custom options at the top and refer to them in config. The first option will be used to toggle our module and the second one will determine our user's name. These options can now be used in any other module, so let's call them in our main configuration. As you can see, config basically refers to the options generally set in your configuration, which allows you to set options based on other options. To make our custom module cleaner, we can also make an alias for config.mainUser at the top and put both of our options under the same set. Every single module you import has access to options defined in all other modules, so what we want to do now is download Home Manager's module and import it anywhere so we can use its options. To tell your flake that it needs to download Home Manager, we want to add it to the inputs at the top and also optionally make Home Manager's old Nix packages follow your Nix packages so you don't have to download two different versions of Nix packages. We can now import Home Manager module into our NixOS configuration just by adding it to modules. Like I've said earlier, it doesn't matter where we import our modules, but the thing is, we are going to be using options from this one in configuration.nix, so let's import it there. I've included this extra special args parameter in the config evaluating function, and what it does is take all inputs of our flake and passes it to parameters of every single module. Meaning we can go to our configuration.nix file, bring the inputs parameter to the scope, and import the module from the inputs. Now we have access to Home Manager and its modules options, but what exactly does it do? As the name suggests, it provides us with a way to declaratively configure your home directory, or more specifically, program config files that are stored there. Yes, you can already define system settings and services, but what if you could also have a universal configuration file for all your user programs like ZSH, NeoVim, Git, or even your favorite tiling window manager? The Nixos module we imported provides us with an option called Home Manager, which lets us define users that will have this special home configuration. For most people, it's just going to be their default user, so write your primary user's name here and import the home.nix file from the same directory. Home.nix will serve as an entry point to our home configuration, just like configuration.nix for NixOS. We do not have this file yet, so to generate it, run this command, which you can find in the link in the description. Rebuild your system, and you should now have a man home configuration.nix command available in your terminal. Just like man configuration.nix, this command will show you all available options, the only difference is they must be set in home.nix or any of the modules that it imports. Home manager modules follow the exact same structure as NixOS modules, but have slightly different options, allowing you to create files with some content, relatively linking files from the config to home directory, and most importantly, configuring your favorite programs with Nix. The coolest part is, Home Manager also works on any other distro or even macOS, so migrating your dot files to Home Manager won't forever bind you to NixOS. With the way we installed it, Home Manager will get rebuilt as part of your system on every NixOS rebuild, so you don't even have to run any additional commands. We have already covered a lot of things, but structuring your configuration is what differentiates a good configuration from the bad one. Here is the project structure that we have currently, let's modify it a bit to make it much easier to navigate and extend. We can start by creating a host directory, which will contain a directory for every machine that we want to manage with our Nix project. Our first host is the current one, so let's create a default directory for it and put these three files there. Don't forget to change relative path pointing to it in the flake, and we can now add new hosts simply by making new directories and defining configurations in the flake. Choosing which one you want to use for rebuilding is simply a matter of changing the last part of the flake command. Currently this setup does not reuse any code between configurations, which makes them hard to maintain and synchronize. To fix this issue, let's also create a module directory which will contain NixOS and Home Manager modules. By splitting your configurations into smaller files, you ensure that the only thing you need to do on a new machine is to choose the modules you need, just like at a buffet. These modules could be used to configure specific programs, bigger parts of your system, or even import other smaller modules. Lastly, because we are using flakes, we don't really have to store our configuration in slash etsy slash nixos anymore, so you can move it anywhere you want, like your home directory for example. NixOS is a very deep rabbit hole and there is much much more to it than it might initially seem. I recommend you to check out some more videos about it on my channel, and also this cool video by Ayoga Master, which covers many additional steps you can take to really learn NixOS. Everything you saw in this video can be found in the link in the description, and now I would like to thank the sponsors of this video. Specifically, Hoskins, Linux Rocks, Peasy, Not A Nut, Uni, Kinzaku, Lasselus, 
Thomas, Thomas Brown, Aiding Bad Ponder, Henning Krause, Cameron, Viejo Friend, Oakley Court, Dude9501, and also the people who supported this channel before. This video is quite big because it took much more time to make than usual, but don't worry, making smaller 4 to 6 minute videos is still my priority. As usual, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you are feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.